Thank you. Meryl, um, you know, you shined in this role because you played such a strong, powerful woman. Is there any strong or powerful women in history, um, or maybe they're still alive, that you would absolutely jump at the chance to play on film? I don't, I don't know. I don't think about things that way. I think about each individual story. And if the story's uh, interesting, it doesn't matter if it's a waitress or a, a queen. I, I'm not discriminating that way. Happy to play interesting people who have challenges in one way or another. And really grateful to just keep working. <laughs> Meryl, Meryl over here, to your left, hi. hi. This is a question from one of the HFPA's Twitter followers. Yes. If there is one question you could ask Mrs. Thatcher, what would it be? Um, well, I would, I would be interested in what she thinks uh, about how, well, this is sort of esoteric, but I'd be interested in what she thinks about Europe right now and the debt crisis and whether her, her views about any of that have evolved and um, because it's sort of interesting how it's coming to the same pass right at the moment. I'd be interested to know. Meryl, Meryl, in, yes. Meryl, in the back. Okay. First of all, congratulations. Thank you very much. So many remarkable roles over the years. How has this character inspired or affected you as a, any differently than any other characters that you've done or well I'll, I'll let you answer you know I think it uh, coming into this I had a very reductive view of Margaret Thatcher I sort of did what we all do to uh, political leaders that we don't agree with we we sort of captionalize them and and turn them into something more than human or, and less than human at the same time. And it was interesting to me to look at the human being behind the headlines and imagine what it's like to look at a life so huge and controversial and groundbreaking in the winter of that life. And, um, and to have sort of a compassionate view of someone with whom I disagree. So, Mr. Reap, uh, Ted, for me, right up front. Congratulations. Oh, okay, where are you? I can't I, I'm, see you. I'm okay, right I, here. I lost my glasses, so I can uh, barely know you're here. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Two questions. One is you've been nominated, I believe, for an Oscar more than any living actor. Do you ever feel like Susan Lucci at the Oscars? <laughs> well, they don't normally nominate. Yes, people that are not living. So, uh, yeah, Susan Lucci at the Oscars. <laughs> and, uh, You know, I'm sure Susan Lucci is very happy with her career <laughs> and with the amount of work and the length, longevity of it and how fulfilled it, it has made her. That's sort of the way I feel. And you have made a distinct choice not to raise your family in Hollywood. And I'm just curious if you could say why. Oh, well, there's nothing wrong with Hollywood, and I did for five years uh, put everybody in school here. Um, you did them here for five years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you're mainly back to New York. Yeah, but my parents were there, and we returned back to um, the East Coast because they were older, and I wanted to be near them. Both my brothers are there. My family is all uh, from, you know, New Jersey, Connecticut, New York area. No, I think it's a lovely place. Every time I come out here, I think, God, this is January? Jeez. You know? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Meryl, right here in the back. Congratulations oh. from the Greek reporter. Oh, thank um, you. We've loved all, all the roles that you have done, but I would like to ask you if it's there a common source of inspiration for every role that you do, something that gives you power throughout your career for any role that you play, what would that be? Is it a person? Is it a, is it a factor? Maybe somebody... What could be a common source of inspiration for you? Well, I, I've i never really gotten to the bottom of me and all the contradictions uh, and <coughs> uh, conundra that I find in my own personality. And I feel like I find myself or parts of myself and I find some understanding of being alive from the characters that I play. 
and I probably have only gravitated towards people that I do feel something uh, of me in. <laughs> that's, that's uh, yeah, yeah, that's Ms. what I would say. Ms. Streep, to your right. Um, Hello, way over here, way over here. Um, you have to wave your curious. little hand. Okay, oh, darling. Right. Okay, um, you know, so. everyone was so concerned about what Ricky was going to do tonight, but your speech also got bleeped. Oh, Is I can't believe I said shit on TV. I can't believe that. I mean, I never do anything like that. But I just, I have such a good speech. Here it is, and I can't see it. I mean, I can't see it at all. I mean, even if you held it at the front row, I couldn't read it. So, was because I left my glasses at the table. Does that so. just come with the territory of the Golden Globes? Would you thing? like to hear it now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. no, 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 no. It's way too long. Yes. Hi, Jessica from Glamour Magazine. Hi. How are you? Um, good. Congratulations on Thank your you. win tonight. Thank you. I wanted to tell you, we're working on a story about women that you're obsessed with. And every time I interview celebrities, politicians, authors about which women they're obsessed with, your name is always at the very top of their list. In fact, I interviewed Jama Mays from Glee. She said that she would most want to make out with you on New Year's <laughs> Eve. Um, your name always comes up. So I want to know what women are you obsessed with and why, whether they're other actors or historians, authors, politicians, whatnot. Well, it's such a nice segue, that question, because I'm very interested in the stories of women and the especially the unwritten history of women. And I'm trying to work very hard to get Congress to uh, let us purchase land on the National Mall to build the first Women's National History Museum, something that we really should have and should be the first in the world and should, should celebrate the accomplishments of women that we don't know about. There are so many stories I could, I could go on for hours with the, the women that I've learned about through going on the website, that's nnationalwhm.org, nwhm.org. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I would say right now, if you want to look them up, Elizabeth Freeman and Deborah Sampson. Study those two girls. Congrats, okay. uh, Thank Meryl. you. Thank you very Con much. Thank you, thank you. Cool. Sorry.